Our biggest problem now, I think, is that we're losing the ability to disagree with each other without hatred or now even violence, whether it's Gaza or race politics generally or global warming. One thing keeps coming through. Extremes of all three causes claim their cause is so great that they are excuse anything for some, even terrorism, to force us to agree with them, even global warming with motorists stopped and paintings destroyed because, you know, global warming is going to kill us all because doesn't Guru Greta Thunberg say exactly that? People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. Yeah, luckily, a lot of people are now starting to see through this, like former pop star Holly Valance. Like, I don't understand why you have this, like, demonic little gremlin high priestess of climatism as the goddess in classrooms, Greta. Greta Thunberg, OK. And the kids are all coming home with depression and anxiety. Why would you go to your music lesson or bother doing your homework it's or get sad. out of bed if you think we're all going to be dead in five years anyway? I mean, they told me in class. Greta told me. Um, why would you bother? doesn't give anybody hope. But some others just get more extreme. Like this 23-year-old Finnish student last week who was arrested after taking the Thunberg message to the next step. Stop this hunger for money, growth and personal profits. It's not sustainable. It's selfish and it's disgusting. Of course, it's not changing for better. I will target a school because those people are where we should draw the line. For personal reasons, I wanted to do this in the high school I graduated from, but it's not practical and also this isn't about me. This will be used to make a change. I think it's beautiful. Joining me from London is Esther Kraku, broadcaster, author, commentator, and so much more. Esther, thank you for your time. Tell people often enough that the global warming is destroying their planet and humanity. Is it really then surprising? Some people think extreme measures are called for. Yes, the problem is with a lot of these movements, we've we've empowered clearly the, pe the people that should be on the fringes, the clearly mentally unwell that think that they've used the cause celebre or the cause du jour uh, to effectively find a new identity, find a new club to identify with. And these people are not really interested in talking about the, the real issues. I mean, the fact that Greta Thunberg, as a 15-year-old girl, was being trotted around at UN conventions as somehow the 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 the, the high priestess, <laughs> to quote uh, Holly Valance, of, of, of climate change is ludicrous. And yet, on, on, on the same way, we have someone like Shamima Begum here in the UK, a 15-year-old who joined a terrorist organization. Somehow, we shouldn't take her seriously because apparently she didn't know what she did. Uh, but we should take the words of Greta Thunberg at 15 years old seriously. The problem is we can't agree with each other because we keep highlighting and we keep uh, promoting insane voices, people that don't understand actually the risks and, and rewards of, of these kinds of things that we're discussing. For example, people talk about, you know, most scientists or the vast majority of scientists, published scientists agree on climate change. Well, yes, because you can't get published if you don't agree with the, the, the current orthodoxy. So you do have scientists presumably that don't necessarily agree with a lot of the, the, the climate change science that's going around. But they, 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 we can't hear from them because they will not get published. We know this for a fact. Um, and, and instead of us to have a frank and open conversation about it, we, we tend to elevate weird, ludicrous voices and expect the rest of us to buy into it and sacrifice our standards of living and basically go into poverty because of something that a 15-year-old Swedish girl said. Spot on, spot on. Esther, what more does Britain have to do to prove it's not racist? You know, it's, you're still flagellating yourselves over there. All its top political leaders on the mainland are now people of colour. Now that the Welsh First Minister is a man with a Zambian mum, Scotland's Chief Minister is Muslim of Pakistani background, and the Prime Minister of Britain has, of course, has of course got Indian heritage. What do you conclude from all of this? It concludes that no matter your colour, you can still be a pretty mediocre politician. <laughs> because at the end of the day, that's what they are. <laughs> Look, we, 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 can, we can accept that Britain is, is in many ways a post-racial society and ha has done a lot more progress on, on, on racism um, than most countries in the world, even though most people don't want to acknowledge it. But the fundamental point is these politicians are still very mediocre. You know, Wales is run like a complete dumpster fire. Labour councils have put up council tax by over 2,000% in the last 10 years because they haven't had to vote on it, except unlike here in England where councils have to vote on it which is why you see Birmingham City Council and Nottingham Council and Croydon Council all going bankrupt. Uh, so the reality is these politicians 
No matter their skin color, their creed, their ethnicity, they're still mediocre. The mediocrity has been shared around. I'm out of time, but I just need to quickly ask, is being Anglo now uh, in England a political drawback? Uh, in, in some ways, uh, but again, it wouldn't make much of a difference because I think we can all agree that the caliber of our politicians is not where it should be. Uh, I think racial equality now means spreading the mediocrity around, which is quite sad. And the, the biggest losers <laughs> are the British people. All right. <laughs> That's the great stuff. Thank you so much.